Hardro, the Viking Ship Society, is building a copy of one of the very well preserved Viking ship finds, Klosterschip. Saga Farman was the first copy built in, it was launched in 2018. And we're drawing on the expertise that was garnered from that project. Our ship takes its name from one of the men who is said to have come from Stein Gord, Harald Hardroda, who was born in 1015. Um, he was a king of Norway from 1046, and he's best known in the United Kingdom as one of the contenders for the throne of England in 1066. And he famously fell at the Battle of Stamford Bridge in Yorkshire to the army of Harold Godwinson, who himself fell at Hastings a short while after to William the Conqueror. Hardrolda was a poet, musician, he was a church builder, a brewer and sportsman, and an uncompromising, perhaps ruthless ruler, hence his uh, later name, Hardrolda, which means hard in his counsel or judgment. Rod is like uh, advice, in uh, modern Norwegian at least. So at a young age, he was one of the uh, survivors at the Battle of Stiklestad, and uh, he fled from Norway at that time, traveling through the eastern lands of the Norse sphere of influence, down eventually to the Black Sea in Constantinople, where he went into service in the Varangian Guard for, in fact, three successive Byzantine emperors. Now this contributed to his amassing of both the wealth of experience but also monetary wealth. Not only through the death of these emperors which contributed to this due to the way that they were allowed to take plunder from each, from, from, from their dead emperor, the Varangians, but also through winning battles and sacking cities or at least putting cities under the, you know, beating cities which uh, I was just reading about it, and perhaps it was as many as 80 cities he was participated in capturing in the Mediterranean and Black Sea. Uh, also read that he was uh, supposed to be taller than uh, most men. That's a, a kind of um, contemporary witness account. And he had a beard and a long moustache. So this wealth was instrumental in his becoming the king of Norway, or at least parts of it, because when he returned from his service with the Varangians, he uh, insisted his nephew, I think his name was Magnus, was the king of that area of Norway, and he became a joint king. But then Magnus died a year later, so he became the sole king of that area of Norway. He wanted to become also the king of Denmark, and he fought many battles against the Danish, and also many battles internally in Norway to consolidate his power as the king of the inland area, the Viken. And I mean, there are different, there are different kingdoms there. I'll leave that to someone who who knows a bit more about it to to comment on. Perhaps someone can comment in the comments. Um, yeah, so from 1046 he reigned in that area of Norway and uh, as I said he later went to England. Um, he was persuaded by the brother of Godwinson in fact who, uh, to, to go for the, to try for the throne of England, which uh, I think somewhere like 300 ships I think perhaps he took and uh, failed doing that. And he failed really about getting becoming the king of Denmark as well. That also failed. Hopefully our ship can uh, live up to its namesake and uh, travel far and wide and gain a wealth of experience. And we're building this ship very near Steingord which is really a uh, very important. Uh, it's a very important farm in Viking history. Uh, quite a few of the most famous Vikings come from that that area, that that farm. Harald being one of them. Um, I think it's his grandfather who was helped on Svarte, or maybe there was a half relationship. I don't know. That's very complicated. That that their um, family tree. I haven't been able to make head or tail of it really. I'll leave that to someone who knows more about it to comment or set it straight. Um, 
but Stangord is still there now, Stone Farm, and um, just outside it there's a there's a burial mound which is called Halfdanshaven, which is supposed to be the burial site of the head of Halfdanshvarta. And uh, it was uh, found by, um, I don't actually know which method they use, but let's just say for argument's sake that it was seismic, but they have found evidence that there was a boat buried there and perhaps of similar size to the one we're building here at 20 meters. It was uh, Snorra, the, the um, Icelandic saga writer who, who, who talks about Hoffman Svarta, and that he was supposed to have been uh, buried at Steingård. And another thing, that, that there's a style of, um, which is called Ringerik stil, or Ringerika style, which is a kind of decorative style that you see. I mean, it's almost one of those styles that's synonymous with Viking aesthetics, really. A kind of florid, serpentine carvings. I might try and put in a few pictures of that here. We'll be using this style of decoration to decorate the ship, and we may even make some of the stones like this one here. So, uh, well, our ship is going to sail on Tidy Fjord, um, and there is evidence that there was Viking boat traffic on these inland lakes. Um, uh, but the ship that, that, that we're building here is certainly an ocean-going ship. It's a kind of it's a kind of trading ship, they think, um, and it, we'll be able to row it as well as sail it. Um, so that's part of the project as well. It's uh, increasing suitable competence to be able to captain and sail the ship for uh, the public. Do uh, click the like button if you like the film and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more films of the kind of work that I do, restoring old houses and that kind of thing. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next film. Bye bye.